In this video, we're going to talk about the lighting composition. Okay, so basically, apart from just illuminating the scene, a lighting artist should be able to use the lighting to kind of like tell story. So each lighting situation can tell a different kind of story and mood. Okay, so again, this is an example on how the artist like telling the time of the day using the lighting as a media to tell the audience. So for example, this is the morning uh, scenario, right? And if you compare the morning and the night, the color is very different. Okay, and again, if it's a night time, you are going to utilize the object surrounding in the scene. So in this case, it will you will use this light, or this is this lamp as a light source. Okay, and in the afternoon, the color also change because the morning uh, time and the afternoon time, the color of the sun is actually quite different. Okay, in the afternoon is a little bit more orange and yellowish. And again, if it's daytime, time, also is different. Okay, so it's very important when it comes to the movie that a lighting artist know how to tell or how to set up the time of the day. Okay, so the audience can uh, know when the story is actually taking place. Now again, when it comes to the film or games, whatever, right? When you trying to illuminate the character, you can still use the three point lighting that we've learned previously. So again, you can create the scenery like this. At the same time, you can use the three point lighting to illuminate the character. And you use that three point light with the light linking only to illuminate a certain character in a scene. Okay, so this is an example of the three-point light and how it's used in a character. Okay, and moving on, right, when you are doing the scenery like this or environment, you try to angle the camera, right, in such a way so there is the foreground, right, so this is the foreground, all these like spiky bits is this foreground and there is the middle ground so this is where you actually put the subject right or your center of attention in the middle ground and you have the background so you have like layers so the audience can see that there is a depth in your composition okay so when it comes to lighting uh, not just like texturing and light you also need to kind of like plan and composite how the environment should look like so at the end of the day you're gonna have like a nice result okay so this is one of the example on how you can do the environment okay foreground middle ground and background okay so this is just a lighting setup for it initially you have a bit of fog because as the object like gets further away from the camera it's getting a bit hard to see and a bit foggy and very blurry and the color is a bit more dull and again this is just an example on how um, people use a lot of light when it comes to dramatic scenes so in this case like there is a bombing happening here again and people are panicking and there is a lot of light happening right and this is like a this balloon plane uh, maybe trying to bomb these people <laughs> and then like um, there is this panic and there is this like lights going everywhere and there's this explosion and yeah so this is the kind of scenario where you want to put like lots of light to kind of like draw attention of the audience that there's a lot of happening a lot of people like um, panicking in the scene okay so we call this technique pools of light good for dramatic scene now now uh, again I kind of like this technique so in this technique we call these uh, gradients of tone so if you compare right this picture on the left and the 
picture on the right. Uh, the picture on the right like has more interesting color because there is a gradient changing from blue from the outside, you know, very subtle to yellow color. Okay, not too harsh, but very slowly. And there's a nice blend in the middle as compared to this picture. So everything is very flat. Okay, so the picture on the left, we consider this as a flat uh, lighting scenario, all right? I mean, there's no depth, it's just like one color and it's very boring. This is something that you would get if you look at uh, maybe some IKEA brochure. Okay, so there's a different objective. Okay, very, um, very flat, there's not much color. Whereas this one, it's something that you want to put or do for your film project. Okay, very interesting color, there's a nice blend to it. Okay, uh, one of my favorite uh, technique for lighting. Okay. Um, again, this is just another example when you want to do like um, scenery or environment. So, I mean, it's a very heavy scene, and don't forget to do uh, volumetric basically. Okay, so when you do like a big scene, you put very nice uh, fog, right, and the object further away, you make it like kind of blur or <coughs> uh, dull color. Okay, as the object getting closer, then the color getting more contrast. Okay, so this is how we call like atmospheric uh, lighting method. Okay, you use like quite a bit of fog in here and volumetric lighting. Now this one, all right, this technique is called uh, implied lighting. Okay, so the idea of this implied lighting method is that you try to tell the audience like there's actually more out there than just the class scene. So for example, this is a classroom. Uh, set up and if you look at this shadow or maybe this highlight in particular right it's very interesting there's like this grid and if you change this highlight or shadow right to maybe like a person right like leaning on the window you're kind of telling like there's actually something happening in the left hand side of the of this shot okay so the implied lighting it's usually used when you want to um, tell the story right in the beginning. Yeah. Then after this, maybe the camera moves to the left or yeah, you know, something like happening. Okay, so the keyword is like it's more out there than just the classroom happening here. Okay, so if you're only relying on this light, right, then there's not much happening in the scene. So you want to have like story like there's something happening outside this classroom and people can see from each other and beyond this region okay so that's implied lighting now another thing that you need to consider very much is the, the color the color palette okay now here i have like a three different set of environment with the three different set of color now if you want to do something like scary right you probably want to use this like green cold right you now for good for like gothic like scary theme and if you want to do something like a uh, very angelic very defined very pure like maybe white and yellow is a good thing and again if you want to do something like evil you know like um, violence whatever you want to choose like this kind of color scheme okay so choosing a color palette is very important because if you choose a wrong one then you may not get the correct mood that you're after okay so again you have to plan your lighting composition or the color palette usually in the color script stage 